This is problem nine from the exam for review sheet. An order for a drug is 4.5 milligrams per kilogram in 100 milliliters of D5W to infuse over two hours. The label directions for the drug read not to exceed a single dose of 300 milligrams. How many milligrams of the drug will you prepare for a patient who weighs 121 pounds? This particular information we have tells us that the drug is being administered based upon the patient's weight, and in particular upon the patient's weight in kilograms. We've been given the patient's weight in pounds. So the first thing we'll want to do is convert that patient's weight from pounds to kilograms. And one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds. Now we can factor in that the patient is to receive 4.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So pounds would cancel, the kilograms would cancel, leaving us the number of milligrams of drug that this patient should receive. And that was our first question. How many milligrams of the drug will you prepare for a patient who weighs 121 pounds? Let's multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 10 so as to remove the decimal. 10 times 1 would give us 10, and 10 times 2.2 would give us 22. Let's do the same thing here. 10 times this numerator gives 45, 10 times the denominator would give 10. Now we don't have any decimal numbers to worry about when we're trying to do any reducing that's possible. Well, right now we can see that the tens will cancel. Is there any other canceling we can do? Well, actually there is. I happen to know that 121 is 11 times 11. Now, you may not have known that, but I'm going to point that out to you. 121 is 11 times 11. So 11 would go into 121 11 times, and 11 would go into 22 two times. So that's going to make my arithmetic a little bit easier. Because now I need to take 11 times 45, and then I need to divide that by 2. So 1 times 45 is 45. 1 times 45 is 45. So we have 495, which we now need to divide by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Let's bring down the 9. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 goes into 15 7 times. And if we took it out in decimal place, we would terminate at 247.5. So that's how many milligrams that's how many milligrams of the drug the patient should receive based upon the patient's weight. Now, there was the warning on the label not to exceed a single dose of 300 milligrams. So part B says, is this a safe dose? And the answer is yes. We haven't exceeded 300 milligrams for this patient. We're under that figure. Part C says calculate the flow rate, flow rate in milliliters per hour if the drop factor is 15 drops per milliliter. So we want to know the flow rate in milliliters per hour. Well, we're supposed to give the patient this dosage of 247.5 milligrams. We're supposed to give that patient that, that dosage. And how are we giving that? Well, notice back at the beginning it says that was to be put in 100 milliliters of D5W. Well, those milligrams then will dissolve in the D5W which actually then is going to simply be what? A hundred milliliters that we're going to infuse? So 
So we don't need to be concerned about those milligrams. We just need to be concerned about the 100 milliliters of the D5W that will have those milligrams dissolved in it. So we're going to give 100 milliliters over two hours. And to find the milliliters per hour, well, we already have that, don't we? So it's simply going to be a division. It's going to be a division 100 divided by 2. We will be administering that drug in the 100 milliliters at a flow rate of 50 milliliters per hour. And then part D said, calculate the flow rate in drops per minute for the same drop factor. Well, let's go back to part C there. They told us the drop factor in part C, but did we really need to use that information since we were looking for milliliters per hour? It really was extraneous information there, but now we need to use it to go from 50 milliliters per hour to drops per minute. And that's something we've done before. Go from hours to minutes. One hour to 60 minutes. And then bring in our drop factor of 15 drops is one milliliter. So the milliliters will now cancel, the hours will cancel, we'll have drops per minute. And all we have to do is the arithmetic that's involved here. 15, I'm going to 15 one time, 15 goes into 64 times. 50 and 4 are both divisible by 2. 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 goes into 25, excuse me, 10 to 50, 25 times. So now it's simply taking 25 and dividing by 2, which is going to give us 12 and a half, 12.5. So the flow rate in drops per minute would be 12.5 drops per minute, which we would either set at probably 12 or 13 drops per minute. Again, depending upon what our equipment can handle and what the policy is of our facility.